Today I'm going to show you what artworks I put inside of my portfolio to apply to my art university. Hope that you will find some knowledge inside of my suggestions. Hello my friends, you look very nice today. Mm -hmm. So let's begin. I have this portfolio that I made back in the year 2020. It was an online portfolio that I was submitting since I was an international student for the UK. So I couldn't go there and say, hey, have a look at my physical portfolio. I couldn't do that. So it was an online submission. I decided that I wanted to have a little theme. You don't need to have it, but I think that for my artworks it was a very good idea because I work mainly with dreams and oniric visions. I wanted to connect every single submission into that topic. I wanted to show off as many mediums as possible because I think that showing diversity in your art is very helpful to let the people that watch your art know that you are capable of an array of various art forms. The first drawing that I decided to put inside of my portfolio was this giant piece. I think that putting self-portraits inside of your portfolio is a very good idea to show off a mirror of yourself as an artist. It's a way to show the commission how you see yourself and you can experiment with this portrait as much as you want. I tried to do a hyper-realistic kind of portrait because I usually don't do it and I wanted to showcase this kind of capacity. Very fun to draw because it was a very big piece. It was a 70 per 50 centimeters and I used the checkers method. Very useful way to draw hyper realistic, especially if you want to do the proportion as much right as possible. I also called this piece daydreaming because as I wanted to have a theme, daydreaming was very fitting for the topic. The next two pieces that I put, it was actually two artworks that I did during my bachelor years. And it's engraving on zinc that I found very interesting to do while I was learning there how to do them. And I drew some bees that will actually be my main symbol after that project. So it's very fun to know that that was one of those artworks that started everything. To tell you very quickly how I did these two pieces, it's a technique that you use zinc plate and then some sort of wax that you put on and then you scrape with a little scraper the wax to show off the zinc plate. And after you scrape everything that you want to show onto the plate, you put that into acid. It can be for a few minutes or for longer. The longer you leave it, the darker the lines will be when printing. I put so many layers of bees in different acid timings. Darker bees and lighter bees that are showing off and playing on the background or in the foreground. It's kind of fun. It was a fun technique to make. So I wanted to have that as a portfolio artwork. With this one, Poppy's Revenge, I wanted to show off the ability to do very fine details onto one drawing. I merged the bee concept with the dream concept and created this kind of surrealistic type of drawing that had very deep dark tones and also very tiny tiny details. If you zoom in you will see, if you zoom out you won't. The next piece that I put is a triptych. It's acrylic on wood and I wanted to make a little metamorphosis, as per the name, it's called metamorphosis, from a swarm of bees to a swarm of dreams. Since the bees were actually the projects during my bachelor years that took me into the more the surrealistic kind of ways, I wanted to show that journey with this exact piece, how the dream grows from bees to the actual dream. You can see in this three-step artwork, as it starts from something very recognizable as a bee, and it becomes a very abstract, dreamy kind of vision. 
This is another technique, watercolor. With this medium, I wanted to show a timeline of a dream where you can see the little crosses that are actually the eyes that close off and then they go into that zone of dreaming not dreaming where you're kind of awake but not but then you are slowly slipping into a dream the main part is the dream where you can see all the swirls the little fishies the submarine kind of vibes and then after all of that the waking up you see the lights and you wake up and the dream is in the past the next piece it's embroidery this was my first ever attempt to embroidery as an art piece and i fell in love with it because it was so fun to do and actually it has so many possibilities and i enjoyed embroidering so much that i actually transferred that to my paintings after this idea this piece was actually another kind of timeline of a dream i wanted to show off again the dream vision from the two eyes that are the three stacked beads on the bottom that are connecting to the main piece with this piece i wanted to play with linoleum it was another printing technique that i enjoy to do it was also the first time that I tried it, so it wasn't super, super perfect, but I actually liked the final effect so much that I put it into my portfolio anyway. The idea of this print was actually taking two different dreams and putting one over another. Because on the base of this gray paper sheet, I drew with the colors a dream flow and I wanted to print another one so they could overlap onto each other a simultaneous two dream because i actually had one time where i had two dreams overlapping each other and so this was the idea behind it inside of my portfolio i put four different oil paintings one of these was this flower head very dreamy surreal kind of flower with a body that held a little surreal bee. The next painting is another one where it shows a body that it's sleeping on the background and on the foreground you can see actually the dream that it's going on. I see the dream very fluidly so it's like a watery effect so I wanted to show off that little water vibe as I see it onto the body that is dreaming. Next painting is one of my most colored paintings and I actually did a little bit of embroidery on this also because I enjoyed the other piece so much that I wanted to put iridescent threads over this painting to show off a little bit of light in the picture. Unluckily, you can't see it very much, but it's there. Colorful with seemingly random elements like this pink column and the beetles. If it's a dream, it doesn't need to make sense. This is what I really, really liked about the oniric world. Nonsense. This was my biggest painting that I put inside of my portfolio. It was a very giant piece, a 90 per 60 centimeter canvas, very big boy. The thing about this one is that you can't understand it 100%. It's actually the vibe that you had inside of the dream that I wanted to show off. It's one of those dreams that you remember fondly and you are like, ah, that dream was very good. This is what this piece wanted to recreate. It also had embroidery on it and I also added some colored beads that it was a very cool touch to put. Lastly, another important thing that I wanted to put inside of the portfolio was live drawings. Since I did have a limit on how many artworks I could submit, I didn't put too many, but two were actually a good amount. And also I put some concept sketches that were helping me to create the painting after. And then lastly, a few sketchbook pages because that's another thing that you need to show off because 
it shows how your process, like your first step process, could actually be. So my final suggestion could be, depending how many artworks you can submit, just try to put as many mediums as possible and also play as much as you can because you want to show off that you can do very different ways of art. I think that one of the most important thing to show off is also patience. If you have at least one piece that it took you so long to finish, that's a good one to put. You can also use mediums that you never tried before. If you try it and you don't like it, don't put that onto your portfolio, but it might spark you some ideas for other pieces that you can actually put in and merge two mediums as it happened for me. Since I liked very much the embroidery piece, I put the embroidery stuff onto my paintings and I mixed the two mediums. Just explore as much that you can. I think that the portfolio is actually a good way to try as much as possible because you have an excuse, you have to show off your talent and if every single submission that you put is the same, it can actually be good if it's a very specific technique, but have fun with it. I think that variety is the key your commission will love. I don't think that every single submission that you put, it should be one majestic piece. Put also the sketches, even if you don't feel like they are this beautiful sketch. Put a few of those because it's showing your artist journey. So by the end, my portfolio had 10 different techniques slash mediums inside. My suggestion is that I would try to do at least three different techniques inside of the portfolio. So if you found this video entertaining or informative, then I'm really happy that I helped you for something. And if you are preparing for your next year portfolio, then good job. You're doing a good job. Continue, experiment and draw and paint and everything and create. Yes, <laughs> I believe in you. <laughs> so yes, this is the end of the video. Thank you so much for giving me your most precious coin, your time coin. And I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.